everybody, Linda here from the Centre Duff. I'm just about to put some beeswax into my boiler, which is on the stove here. I just thought I'd show you what I do with this beeswax I get from my the beekeeper who lives across the road from me. Now, he gives me all this uh, lovely beeswax from his hive that's um, all in little pieces. It still has some honey in it and still has some little dead bees and all sorts of things. So what I do now is I'm going to put all of that into my pot here which has some water. When it comes to the boil I'll put it in there in the pot and then what happens is the, um, the water melts the beeswax and the beeswax when it when it cools down the beeswax will be left on top of the water and you'll have this disc of wax so you just keep doing that keep reboiling it in water until your beeswax is clear and then you have a nice um, chunk of beeswax to use in your soap or your lotions or whatever you want to use it in I just thought I'd share that with you in case you're wondering how um, how you would do that. I'm very, very lucky. I have this wonderful source of natural beeswax and also I get a lovely pot of beautiful honey as well. Lovely. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute and I'll show you some more from this. Bye. Uh, here we have the um, wax and the honey and all the little um, bits and pieces that's in the wax. They're boiling up on the stove now. I'll just turn it off, wait for it to cool down, and then I'll take take the wax off the top. It will have formed a, a little round disc on the top and um, scrape all the debris from underneath the wax and then reboil it and off we go again and keep doing that until the wax is clear. I still have this much left in my bucket so I'm just going to keep on doing that till I've got all of it um, melted down. Um, I have to, I'll have to do all that bucket today because and it's quite a big bucket because otherwise um, it'll attract bees to it and also if you turn um, into honey mead if I don't um, get the um, honey and the wax out. So that's what I'm doing today. I'll be boiling up wax on my stove and waiting for it to cool. So I'll, um, I'll post some more pictures when, um, when it cools. See you soon. Hi, I'm back again with my beeswax. Now uh, I've poured off the water and this is the disc of wax that was sitting on top of the water it's the top of it and underneath it's the underside with all the dirt well it's not dirt it's just um, what's left over from the honey and everything so what I do now is just scrape that off and um, it comes off quite easily scrape as much of it as I can under the running water to do that and then break it up into pieces again and it's cleaned a little bit more on that it will just come off it's just little wax waxy debris put it back in my saucepan and reboil it and do the process all over again I'll probably have to do it four or five times but I promise you I will end up with beautiful clear white beeswax fabulous in your soap and in your body products uh, I'll show you the end result when um, I've finished processing it thanks for watching bye
Hi, it's Linda here from the Centre Dove. I'm just taking Dougal out to walk down to the park, so I thought I'd just show you a bit of my area. We're walking down the street. No, this is not the street that I live in, it's just around the corner. But you can see there's plenty of nice big tall trees and lots of pretty houses and there's Dougal front walking along with some palm trees ok I'll, I'll turn this off now and then when we come to the park I'll be back with you ok we're just walking up into the park area now these houses here back out onto this park. I'll just scan around and show you a few of the homes here. Uh, it's quite a nice area. Dogs barking. And there's a bit of a scan around the park. I hope this is coming out because it's quite a sunny day today, middle of autumn. Here we are. We're coming up to the park area, and I'll let Dougal off, and he can go and have a run amongst the trees. So I'll be with you in a minute. I just wanted to show you this part of the park, which is my favourite part. It's up on the hill, looking down at all the the bush area and just sitting here listening to the wind blowing in the trees is a sheer delight. I don't know if you can hear the birds in the background but there are just above me here there are rainbow lorikeets and making their little noises in the tree. Um, I can see I can see an owl up there but um, I can't I don't think you'd be able to pick it up. He's quite they hide themselves away on the branches. He's up there um, because that their feathers are the same colour as the tree branches. So. But just to sit here and be still is lovely. Here comes, here comes a dog and Dougal's getting very upset. <laughs> Two big dogs just coming, so I'll see you later. And here's little wussy Dougal sitting on my knee now after those big dogs went past. They were huge, <laughs> like horses. Okay, so that's my bit for the day. Bye. Back again, I've just let Dougal off the lead and so I'm giving you a bit of a scan around the park. There's a little picnic area there and up there some swings and slides for the kids and a cricket practice area with the nets around. There's Dougal and houses that back onto the park here. Um, you can just see through the trees some of the homes. They're all on acre blocks. Quite big homes. All have beautiful backyards and swimming pools, etc. It's a lovely area. This is a dog friendly park. It's also an area where people come and exercise. And you can see one of the frames there for exercising on and through there we're looking at now the um, the paper barks we call them melaleucas and a big eucalypt there huge tree huge those right up beautiful Australian eucalypt this is quite a, um, a wet 
sort of area so these are like swamp paperbarks they love the water and so that's why they're here these, these are, this is all native bushland that has been kept as a park area well, all around there are houses a lot of these houses back onto the park have um, tennis courts and big swimming pools and all that sort of thing. This house here I might be able to scan around and show you if the sun if I can get in front of the sun uh, you can see the it's just a beautiful tree bushy area where the dogs can come. It's a dog dog friendly park. You can bring them off lead and they can just run around provided you keep them under control. There's a big home through there. Swimming pool and it's quite huge. It just sold for 1.4 million dollars which is quite a bit here in Aussie. <laughs> um, scanning around again. This park is about three minutes from my from where I live. I don't live on acreage. <laughs> so I live up the other end of the street, but it's still a really nice street to live in. Beautiful homes, beautiful trees and I just love it, love coming here to this park. So there's not much more I can show you. Um, through here they're just all different kinds of Australian native trees. Um, a casuarina tree here in front of me I'm coming up to looks a little bit like a pine tree but it's uh, an Australian native here. You can see the leaves are a little bit like pine. Um, we get a lot of birds in here, a lot of um, rainbow lorikeets, um, uh, parrots and um, galahs. Beautiful birds just come in here all the time and often in these big tall gum trees here we see um, owls, like tawny frogmouth owls, which are all around this area. Okay, so that's my local park. And tomorrow we, uh, we might go to the beach area where we take Dougal for a little bit of a, a run. Sometimes it's the perfect time of year, this time of year. I don't like it when it's too hot, but it's nice this time of year. Okay, that's it for the park. Talk to you later. Bye.